Hello, I hope you can um, see me and hear me okay. Um, I, promi the, I, I promise you I'd bring a pet with me this time. Um, I, I haven't watched my last video back. I just watched the very end and said, I thought, is there anything I promised? And I know I'm, I promised things throughout, but I'd, I'd definitely better bring a pet. Now, initially I brought Holly in. She's my white uh, chihuahua. And I thought it'd be really nice because uh, she's just had her eighth birthday. And, um, but Rafe was really, really whining. I know you shouldn't really succumb to their demands, but he was, he was really missing. He was even missing Holly, or he knew the fun she was going to have in here. And Holly wasn't that bothered, so I've put Holly back in the kitchen, and uh, and I've brought Rafe in, and she, she's as good as gold, and uh, and now he's happy as Larry. So you're gonna you're gonna have Rafe today. So uh, I've looked at my video in, uh, briefly when it was, and it's like about a month ago. So uh, we've made it. We've made it through January, and um, and I suppose. Uh, what has kept me uh, going through January this time is um, is Valentine's Day. What I tend to do in a, after Christmas, I either carry on Christmas crafting, the things that I really wanted to get done uh, that I never got done, uh, or I um, I focus on something else. So. Um, a lot, most years I focus on Burns Night, which is in January, and it's a Scottish celebration. I'm not Scottish, but um, obviously we link to Scotland, aren't we? I'm far from Scotland, but I've um, I've got a few relatives that live on the Isle of Arran, and uh, so and I and I like that um, kind of you know the Scottish culture. I like you know I like all cultures, and um, I find cultures and religions fascinating, and. And I, I like I like to um, I like to know about them and, and their things, and um, so um, usually I focus on. That. And I made a lot of um, Scottish themed uh, things um, last year, and uh, another thing um, which I haven't really done. I don't think I've ever done this, but this is something else I could do in January, and um, and it's Chinese New Year, so that's another another thing you could concentrate your crafts on, um, but. This year, um, like I always make something for Valentine's for my husband, and generally buy, um, make him a card. Um, but I've really uh, done a lot more for Valentine's Day um, this year. I'm sorry if I'm, I keep looking all over the place, but I've really I, the way I've put my phone, the camera is like down here, so I've got to try and look at that little dot. Uh, it gets a bit boring looking at this little dot. I like to see, like, you know, what's going on. And um, uh, so I fo focus on Valentine's Day. Um, but I'll get to that in a moment because um, on social media I post some needle punching and people were interested on in how I did it. And I promised that I would demonstrate. So I'd rather get that done early on. So if that's what they're here for, they can watch that and then go. Um, I'm not an expert at um, needle punching. It's something I did in my childhood. Um, I've still got my needle punch from childhood somewhere and it's um, and it's for embroidery thread and you need a punch for embroidery thread. But um, I know um, uh, it's got quite trendy doing it with a yarn and wool and whatever you call it and um, onto fabric. So, um, so I've had a bit of a bash at that. And, and 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 also I've before now I've also um, needle punched paper uh, or card and that was last year for the first time so I'll show you that um, basically the needle um, it's from we are memory keepers that like I really like that brand so I've got a number of their tools and basically with that. Um, you get um, a frame. Now I have tried fabric in this magnetic frame, and the magnet is is really good, but it's not good enough to hold fabric. So it's only good enough for card. So you put your card in there. But before you do that, uh, if you want to, um, if you want to just freehand, just go for it. But you get these stencils. So what you do is you choose the stencil you want, um, and then you 
use a pen or pencil to dot those um, make those dots so when you put your card into there you know where to needle punch and um, the one that I did is it on here uh, yeah I don't know how well you can. I don't need to always put something so I can put something behind it I don't know if you, how well you can see no you can't see that at all well basically it's dots it's like dot to dot that make up love so I did love uh, that this is the needle punch. It comes with a, a lid and um, and it looks like that. And you, you just literally, you s stab it into the card like that. And the, uh, and it, I must admit, it was quite tricky on card because it, it, it was um, lightly to tear. So it's not the easiest, but I only used it on one kind of card. And that was my efforts. That's the love. Hopefully you see that the right way round. And, uh, and when you finish that, you actually have to put something to stick it on the back. And I'll just put duct tape just to keep that in place. And um, yeah, that, that was a lovely thing to do. I did that obviously a while ago. But uh, I thought as we're talking about needle punching, I would show you that. that actually, it's quite handy because I have a needle punch drawer. And, uh, and it's, I'm right next to it, so I can pop those straight back in. Even though the, ne the needle punch just fell out of the box. So I'll, oh, sorry about all that. I'll sort that out after. Let me just have a little sip of my coffee. So my next um, attempts on needle punching was with... Um, oh, where is it? Ah, with this one. Now these are really common right now. Now I uh, know that you use quite thick yarn. This is uh, double knit DK, doubled right. Um, because I know that when I've seen them used, it's quite thick. I think that it's more like chunky yarn they use. And I had a go on some hessian and uh, it wasn't working very well. And I thought this isn't gonna work, but um, I basically I took it out with me to a home education event that I took my son to along with a new one I've bought which I'll show you in a minute and I left this on the table with with this and actually the, my son and another boy were having a go and actually they were they were getting on okay with it and I thought what 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 am I doing wrong but they didn't finish it but I finished it when we got home so it's not it's not as uniform as I would choose to do it um but it did work it they say I think they said that it's not going to work on Hessian but it did it did work and what I found worked for me that um I think I wasn't doing before I had to push the needle in really far far as I could get it the only thing I'm a bit unsure about with this this moves so I don't know where I should keep it. Um, and, and they're quite a challenge to thread. I think if you were at home and you've got some long piece of wire or something you turn your fabric in and out or something, you'd find it easier, but I was out. So um, to thread it up, um, I had to drop um, a needle and thread because I had that on me through it through it like that, uh, through it the other way, then tie it on and pull my yarn through and I did it that way. And what I'd recommend is once you've got one threaded up, always leave it threaded up. So say if you wanted to change your colour, I would tie my next one on, cut it this off, tie your next one on and pull it through and you'd never have to um, thread it again. So th but this is the effort. It's a bit of a mess from two um teenage boys and and myself but um we did manage to do it so i haven't cut the tails at the back and it does look it does look a bit messy those are the tails that i have haven't cut and that's what it's like at the back so uh, it's a bit like um 
what they do in the in older days it's still done today i think for a hobby is that when you make rugs but you'd do it the opposite way like you'd have a latch hook and you'd pull it through so you'd use that side and i think with needle punch you can actually do that you could say if you were doing a flower with petals in this technique and then when you wanted something a bit taller in the middle you'd do it the opposite way to make it stand up so the the one that I'm getting on with better, it wasn't all that I wasn't getting on with it the whole time, but um, I'll show you. And it was one that came as a part of a kit. Let me show you the box. I got it off Amazon and it's needle punch kit, DIY with a toga, I think you pronounce it. It looks like that. And uh, you get a in it you get a diagram of what you're going to make you get a hoop the fabric and the needle and oh and the yarn so the different colours now I've started this and that's how it's looking so far but I was having trouble but again I think it's because I wasn't digging the needle in far enough, I think. What it is, it when you, if you see anyone do it, it looks so easy, they're just going like this. But you've got to put that needle really far in. Now, in the instructions, it tells you, so it's got different, can you see on here? It's really bright, isn't it? Can you see there's different markings? It tells you to have it on C. Now, I don't know what the A, B and C does. Um, doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you what thickness of yarn to use if you wanted to do it again, but I'd say that's chunky. And it doesn't tell you what kind of fabric, fabric it is. Now, I know that you, diff, people use monk's cloth, but I think there's a recommended size. So how you can work out the size, I'm just seeing if I've got a ruler to hand. have. So if you take an inch, so if I look at an inch on here, and you count how many uh, dots across, so squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ah, so tw this then, there's twelve, twelve squares across the inch, so there'll be twelve that way. So that means that will be a twelve count. doesn't tell you what it is, so whether it's a... T 12 pound um, uh, Ada or Aida, however you say it, like for cross stitch. But what I will say is comparing to what you use for cross stitch, like I know some people might use beautiful things, but when I've ever had anything cross stitch, it's not felt like this. This feels like cotton. I'd say this is cotton, where when I've had cross stitch things before, um, they've been a bit more man made feeling. And I, I know that you can use monk's cloth. Um, what I, I would do as well, if you were really serious about doing this, um, I'd get yourself, um, do you know, like a canvas frame? Do you know when you get like a, a blank canvas on a frame? I'd, I'd basically take that off and just keep your frame. I would stretch your fabric around it and staple it on and get a real tight tension. I think that is a real must with this. I think... You need to be digging your, your needle in. Now, what I'll, I'm going to try and show you now. I haven't done this for a while now. It was like the sometime last month I was doing this at the home ed event. You, when you've threaded your needle, you bring it through. There's through. There's like an eye there, and you bring it through the eye. Now I've transported it like that and tied it together so it doesn't come apart. And I've kept it, for, even though I need to change colour, I've kept that in so I can do a demo. I'll get my scissors. Now the next colour is going to be this like beige colour. I should have unwrapped this really, shouldn't I, before. You know what I'm like, I'm not very prepared. I think, right, I've got time to do this video and I just go and grab a load of things and just go for it. So um, I'll tie this on. I've tied that and hopefully I can get that. Now, at one point, this wasn't working when I was doing it, when I was at the home ed group. I can't get that. That's it. 
bit tough. Um, it wasn't working. And actually what I found out is that um, there was a knot in my yarn. So that's why it wasn't working. The knot had got inside the needle. So every time I punched, my work was coming undone. And it was quite disheartening. Now what a good idea to do with this. I could have do, done with moving, moving it down actually. I might not be able to get up to that line with where it is at the moment, but what you can do, you can always go back. Um, I don't know whether to pull it down a little actually, just so I can it, show you. I'll just tighten that up. Hopefully <laughs> this works. Now what you want to do is see that opening here. You want to lead with that lead with that side so I'm just gonna like push that in on the line like that now when you lift you don't lift the tip off the fabric you slide it along around two or three holes width and then in again slide it along now what you don't want to do is pull it out and lift it because you can have this big long loop and that isn't what you want so I'm just sliding it along and then jabbing it all the way in if I just it's probably not a good idea me doing the beige is it well as you can see I've got a drawn line you can't see that anymore do you know what I've used the wrong I've done the wrong side that doesn't matter what it does doesn't it I was meant to do the other, the other end right this just show you actually I'll pull it all out you made a mistake don't worry pull it out if in doubt pull it <laughs> I shouldn't know sorry I shouldn't say that right <laughs> right I'll do the other side I meant to have done a, a bit a lighter beige um on that side with pink dots oh right can you can you see it oh yes you can see that so if i keep sliding it along i'm sorry i would i'd love it if i if i had a professional uh tip. do you know what i've got all these skills right i'd love to show you and demonstrate but with it would just be impossible it's just me doing this with my phone and uh, and it's just oh, all the time. I'm like I am a busy mum and a home educator, and I've got all these things going on. So uh, I haven't, I just haven't got. Even if I had all the time, but I just haven't got the facilities. I just need I need a cam a cameraman and, and a team. <laughs> right? Can you see that now? So I hope that is a bit of an insight. So basically you'd go all around the edge, punching this, two or three holes aside. Now what you would do, like oh, I'm not gonna go all the way around the edge now, but how I'd recommend you do it when you do your filling in. Think of bricks, so stagger them. Do you know the way, um, Obviously squares are on top, so think of bricks and stagger them so when you go back, go in between. So jab down the next one in the middle of your row before and do it like that. That's how I do it. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll get a bit further along with this and when I do another video, I'll, I'll do the filling, I'll do the outline, and when I do another video, I'll show more filling in. But I hope that has helped a little bit. So that I've shown you this kit, it was just put punch needle and numbers on, and it looks like that. So if you want to get exactly to look at, no, I, I don't get paid for this. You know, nobody sponsoring me, sending me anything free to demo. Like, I have, um, I have become a sample, um, I'm in a sample club for uh, my friends now uh, to do, um, do you know the, the candle uh, wax melt things that it's leave a scent. I am, um, I am a sampler for her now, uh, but I am a good customer as well. So, um, but other than that, I'm not, uh, you know, I win the odd competition, but I'm not getting sent anything. So, so that's, 
that for now. If there's something else I think I need to tell you now, I'll tell you. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. If there's any questions that you feel I didn't answer, um, please, please ask and I'll try and do it next time. Um, so what I've been up to, I'm just watching Rafe in there, he's hopefully you can see him every now and then um i've been doing um more red work and um what, what shall i show you first so my lampshade club i've been in this lampshade club since early last year and i've been getting these little packages with a suggestion of how you do them with sometimes you've got like a transfer that you use and you were uh, and you do, um, you know, the red work of that theme. And uh, I, I had them collecting and collecting. And then when it got to autumn, I did one. And I have shown you this before. So this is the shade that I made. Um, an autumn themed one. And um, then we had, you get them every other month. And then the next one that came along was Christmas, but I didn't end up making that one uh, just because I'd got all the, I was making the nativity and uh, that did take up a lot of time um, leading up to Christmas. So I didn't get around to doing it. Um, but, excuse me. So then um, I, the next one has come along. It came on Saturday just after lunch and I spent all Saturday afternoon stitching it and um, I've, I, I actually managed to watch nearly three films. Um, I put um, one channel on and Alice in Wonderland was on, you know, the modern day one with the real people, with Johnny Depp. Uh, and I watched that one, um, that had already started while I was stitching and, and prepped and everything and then uh, I turned over and Nanny McPhee had just started I'm, I'm a bit of a kid aren't I so I watched Nanny McPhee and then um and then Trek came on so I had a bit of that on, that on and then it was time for Chinese so uh so I really went for it with this I thought I've got one to get this done and uh and here it is so um basically what you do is you you do all different hearts and you use different kind of stitching so uh, i did um let me have a look at so i started with this one i did like a basic back stitch this one uh was a whipped stitch so it's basically like a back it's like doing a running no a back stitch and then you sort of work through those stitches, go back round. I'm just trying to think of the best way to describe it. Then I did an applique felt heart. Um, I blanket stitched around the edge, and I did a running stitch around the outer bit. And I've and I've put some. I didn't. I got the red button with it, but I didn't get that button. I got that in my Mandy Short Advent Calendar, a pack of them. So I use that on there. I did some little kisses in places, and um, and I did like a heri a wide herringbone stitch here, and I think that looks like you know quite quite nice such a bit gothic almost and then uh, I did the next heart with French knots all the way around and then I couldn't resist I've put C and C obviously one C is for Claire and the other C uh, is for Chris because obviously with Valentine's Day coming and um, then I've done a um a chain stitch heart I don't know how well you can see these chain stitch yeah, I'll get a little bit closer for you. Right, and then uh, I've done like um, a feather. Is that a, a just like a lazy daisy stitch? But it, I've made it look like leaves. Uh, and then what was the final one? The final one, I think I did um, a stem stitch, but I did it differently to how I've done a stem stitch before. But then what I realised is after I'd sewn the buttons on. The three heart buttons were for the closure, but I'd used one of the hearts um, on the actual piece, so I've had to put a circle one in the middle and a heart at the top and bottom, so um, they're in there. So it's really nice to change that up, actually. And uh, I'm re I'm, I plan to do the others, the ones I was supposed to do last year, I plan to do them this year, so that's a lot of fun. And since um, I've last seen you, I have made the Lampshade Club folder. You might have seen this on social media, but um, this is the folder that you make to keep your lampshades in. Now, I made it as you were supposed to, but 
but you were supposed to put the label here but I realised the red work wasn't going to fit on there so I don't know if um, I don't know what was going on there actually if it's just um, something that maybe you should have it should have said put a five inch flap or six inch I don't know but I actually really like it there because when you um, you open it it stays there so I, I did a nice checker uh, lining and I keep what you're supposed to do is when you're not using some of the lampshades you're meant to keep those in there but because I'd only made one I didn't have any to keep in there and um, so what I've been keeping in there for now are the ones I've got to do so that's an Easter themed one and, and there's the others but I'm not going to get them all out because I know my videos are really long and I go on and on and on so I'm not going to show you every single one because you'll see them as I've made them I'll show you then uh, another thing um, I made um, which I, I should have showed you this last time because I had I think I'd already made it I don't know but in my um, mantra advent calendar you got to make um, a key fob there was a things to make the key fob not the tools but luckily I'd already got the tools uh, and it's and it's quite a small one but I had already started making some others and, um, and the, this was a kit from Mandy that I bought some time ago and um, and these are a bit if you compare the one in the advent calendar shorter but these they're all a little longer. I don't know whether I left them longer because I'd got the length available, but but yeah, I've made those key fobs and those are lovely. Uh, and then in uh, and because I was in key fob mode, um, I decided to make one that I got in my secret society um, mantra last year, and it's um, a foundation paper piece. Um, I'm sorry if you're not. A quilter but um just to tell you basically it's when you've got your design on paper and you, you stitch your fabric to the paper and you flip it over and, and and whatever so and that's how i did that um and i really love that one i'm gonna start using these they've been hanging i just love them so much i've got i've had them hanging in my um porch on all the hooks and they and they've looked really lovely um so those are made and um uh, going back to red work, I've been doing more red work. I'll just move this out. I need to show you that. I promised somebody I was going to show that. Now, I'm always going on about um, the Christmas red work quilt. Now, if you don't know what a red work quilt is, this is one I've made before that you might have seen if you watch my video. So basically, you make up all these red work blocks, you do a combination of quilt blocks, and you just put it all together and you you know, you quilt it and make a binding and you've got your, your backing and things. So that's, so I want to make a Christmas one and that's what I've been working towards. So I've been posting the, uh, the blocks um, on my social media and uh, I plan to do one a month at the minute. Um, so I'm actually due to do a February one. If uh, Basically, I worked out if I did one a month, it would the the red work blocks would be done by June plus there's four little ones that I was going to fit in here and there so out of the four little ones I was going to fit in here and there I've made two of them and they're a musical note so they're quite small and I've got two other small ones I've got to do and the one that I managed to get done in January um is this one and this this quilt is not Mandy, it's Daisy Chain Designs. Uh, did I, sh I might have shown you that last time, you know, I'm really sorry if I have, because I, ha I have shown you before. So I'm working on, it's very, the one I'm working on, I've got, I think I've done about three stitches on it so far because I have been knitting something. Um, so it's like I've got something going on in the bedroom and I've, and I've February has begun. I thought I've got to start my red work, but I have been knitting something. I'm thinking, oh, it's not going to take that long to knit this. So I might knit that and then do my February block. Um, so the block that I'm doing, we'll be doing this month, is very much like this. It's the second half. It's the next bit of this um 
Christmas Carol, it's the part of the Silent Night. So this bit will be at the top of the quilt and the one I'm working on now will be at the bottom. So um, I'm trying to pick out which are the biggest things to do. And what I've been doing is, um, if you remember my Mandy Shaw advent calendar, my completed red works and a few little uh, advent calendar things I haven't made yet, I'm actually keeping in my box, which is a nice way. As long as I remember, I've got them in there. So that's red work out of the way. Um, I've mentioned that um, I've been, I, I'm trying, oh, I keep saying um, on the on some of the videos i'm going to try not to say that on the um, i've done it again already right <laughs> on my last video uh, and other videos i've mentioned a crochet cardigan and now if you love crochet you're probably thinking when are we going to see this cardigan and if you follow me on social media you'll have seen it and i really styled it out if you if you see it you'll really <laughs> You realise, oh, oh, I did feel a bit stupid. I just went for it. I did, but uh, <laughs> but here it is, and uh, and here is my cardigan, and I absolutely love it. And basically, it, I think it was in the Molly Makes magazine. I didn't buy the actual um, paper magazine. Um, for it was going to be so it would be a, a Valentine Valentine make for two thousand and nineteen, but I didn't know about it until uh, people would made theirs and posting them so I was like oh where did you get that from and someone's mum had made one and uh, and it was on uh, and and I got the digital copy of Molly Makes and um, and I, I, I thought oh, I'd love to get it done now for this Valentine's Day and I've been carrying it around in my bag and you work on the back piece first and I was just doing a couple of rows here and there when I was out and about and I thought I've just got to get this done so once I finished that back piece there was just no stopping me then so I just went for it so the front two pieces crocheted quite quick and then the, the, then it was the sleeve all I'd say about the sleeve like, it was really good with the other two pieces because I could sit and watch tv and things but uh like with my husband in the evening but uh, in the um when I got to the sleeves I had to just sit on my own because I had to count because you've got all these heart bubbles but um, yeah, it's really not really cosy, and I really like it. Um, I'm so glad I made it, and actually, I like it so much because I find some uh, like knitting patterns or crochet patterns, the clothes was. I think oh, I wouldn't wear that, but I knew the shape. I'd wear it, and um, I'd, I would make it again. Um, I definitely would make it again in other colours. I'd like a grey, maybe a pink. Um, so that's the um, the crochet. So I would have liked to have got cracking on another crochet project, but um, like I say, I've got the uh, I've got the red work to do that I sit in the evening, and um, and I, I had to knit. I haven't knitted in quite a while. When I look back at my uh, yarny projects the last couple of years, since basically since I've been home educating my son. I had to give up my knit and natter, so I wasn't really knitting and crocheting very often. And actually, I've done a bit of crochet, but I don't think I've done any knitting, so I'm just itching to knit. So, uh, and check I've not lost it. I've not lost it, it looks great. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is, I'll do a bit more and, uh, and then I'll talk about it. So, Valentine's Day makes. Right, I will be making a Valentine card for my husband. I've not done that yet. Um, he already knows about the lampshade and he has seen a snippet of one thing on social media, but he hasn't seen it finished. And I haven't posted it finished other than in a group, another group that no one's gonna see it. So I've been collecting bits and bobs. Now I've got this basket and I, I got this at Christmas. Um, my eldest son's uh, girlfriend uh, get, or mom gave Gave him a hamper of food they know he loves his snacks they gave him a hamper of food so he's eaten all the food and i've kept the basket so i've been filling it up with lovely things right for my husband for valentine's day now i'm going to get things out. i'm going to mess it all up but i don't think it's all finalized yet so this is the however you want to call him sloth sloth i know some people say sloth for one, sloths for multiple, and some people say sloth, but I think it depends how posh you are, isn't it really? <laughs> so I've made him, and he's an owl and the sewing cat, 
a pattern oh well actually a kit i bought him as a kit and he's gorgeous he's absolutely gorgeous now my husband does call me call me uh call me a sloth and uh oh, he's just pulling up now he's gonna ruin my i'm gonna have to shout in a minute and say i'm filming right because i haven't put a fill i haven't put a note on the door so uh so i've put i've bought these for a pound at the pound shop i bought two of these because i'm gonna do something else with them and i've and i've bought these wine glasses like all of our wine glasses i've either left them next door or I've, we've they've got broken and they've got little hearts all over them so and i've put those in his arms and um and i've and i've got this this mug from the pound shop and uh, and i thought it looks really like emma bridgewater uh, it's lovely i, I, put, I had uh, an emma bridgewater christmas one made for him and uh, and it's very much like that but his is bigger his is like a pint one this is like a half pint size and um this is the uh i can hear them chris Hello. i'm filming okay. oh, here is the uh the second one so i'm hoping we can have a glass of wine together and uh and i've bought this plate from the pound shop one obviously a pound i thought this was lovely and um i bought this little plastic heart and it's full of petals i suppose you meant to like spread those around maybe on the bed or wherever but i've got that uh, here's the other bunch of roses that I plan to use for decor and I've got these and I've got I bought two packs because I thought they'd be for my whole family and um and they're lovely they're like do you know their brand Le Creusier I've got um a few of their things I've had one of their pots for years and years and they're lovely quality and these are like little rampings and they look like Le Creusier but they're actually the pound shop and I bought two packs of them so I could make some little like souffles or puddings for everybody and um, and the final thing in here that I've got to show you is my little cruelty project so let's do the swap gosh I've got to what, what should I drop this glass put him in there oh actually I'll show you a little more of him and here it is basically I cut out like I wasn't overly keen on the pink fabrics I had because I don't buy a lot of pink because I've got a fam I live in a house full of men I'm the only girl so I generally make things for them so um so yes yeah, so I've got all my pink fabrics together and um and I cut them in uh, squares and triangles and, ma and made up this heart and I think it looks really good and I, and I quilted it um, straight line quilting on the back um i actually there's something stuck to it um i did free motion quilting i don't know if you can see that but i just really went for it on the back and actually did quilt the back and um and i put a zip in the bottom and i um and because of all the bulk of the wadding being because i've obviously backs wadded um I did um, a binding and this is a binding that I did make but I made ages ago. I keep um, basically a little basket down here of bindings that I make and then if I make a project and there's a bit left over I'll put it in there and put wrap it up and put a pin in it. So I was lucky I'd got something pink. It doesn't match any of these fabrics which is a shame but it is pink and I really like that. Now what I will say about, I've got to go on about this sloth again. Let's take, take this out. It's absolutely fabulous he is. He'd be lovely for a child as well. But um, he, you can take his hands apart and they've got Velcro on them like that. And his feet. So you can actually get him to dangle on things, which I thought was absolutely lovely. So that's all the things for now. Um, there's probably one more thing I'd like to show you, which is a hints and tricks kind of thing, and it's how I store my fabric. And um, I tend, I'm, I do keep piles of fat quarters, and I have got like, you know, little baskets of loads of fabrics in. But I'm just trying to get a bit more organised. I'm because I've got a lot of red fabrics. I have a basket of reds now. I've got a basket of pinks now because i was working on a lot of pinks and a basket of what else i've got new 
uh, I've started filling up some neutrals as well but what I, I would want to do or what I'm doing is I don't really want to put all really small pieces in there so basically I don't know if you can see this I've got these very small baskets so if anything is like an inch wide it can be longer but if anything is like an inch or under two and a half inches I pop in here I've made labels and I pop in here and uh, here here I've got a two and a half inch basket and I've actually put um, some jelly rolls in here because obviously they're two and a half inch I've put those in there and uh, this is um, a three and a half inch basket that I've started to to fill up and so look and I've got yeah, a five have I got five yeah five inches and I've put some charm packs in there and I've got a seven inch one which I've got nothing in I've got fabrics that I thought would be okay from the seven inch one but I didn't really want to cut them smaller to be seven inches just in case I wanted them for something that needs to be bigger so at the minute there's nothing in the seven inch one but slowly over time we're going to start filling up so basically I'm not going to go crazy going through all my fabrics doing it I'm going to kind of do it as I go along as I do each project anything that's left over now on I'll put in there um, in those baskets in and coordinated and um, plastic baskets like I do um, the ones I have the bigger fabrics in are like these but they're they're bigger let's see if I can get one here Here's one of them. This hasn't got fabric in it. This has got jewellery making things because I actually haven't mentioned my jewellery, but I'm always doing jewellery making. But I don't, what it is, I don't post my jewellery making generally on social media. I've got fluff. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and that's because I, um, they, for me, they don't photograph very well. You just get a big sparkle. And you can't really see what I'm posting a picture of, so I generally don't bother. Excuse me. <coughs> right, I think I'm going to end it there. So it's coming to an end anyway. And, um, oh, I'm so sorry. <coughs> it's all these fabric scraps, isn't it? I feel like probably dust has got on me. So these are the baskets I have for all the, uh, the bigger pieces. And, and, that, and that's what I'm up to at the moment. So now I've finished off this quilty cushion, I am allowing myself to start my moon drift quilt, which is Janet Clare. I know I don't normally like having one more than one quilt on the go, but I don't think the red work quilt at the moment counts because I'm only doing red work. I'm not doing the quilting. So I am going to start doing my, um, my moon drift Janet Clare quilt now. And, um, and that you get two blocks a month out of um, a quilting. Today's quilt. Today's quilter. You get two blocks a month, and I've got a number of those now, and I've got the fabric. So uh, obviously, I'll have to tidy up um, before I do any of that, and I won't be doing that today. But um, yes, that's where I'm at. I'm knitting something. I've got a Valentine card to make. I've got. I'm going to start my quilt. I'm doing my red work, I'm a Christmas quilt, and um, and, and but I'll be making my mama cards, so I suppose, that, um, for her birthday, because her birthday is the day after Valentine's Day, but we're going out for her uh, birthday around that time as well. So, um, yeah, so uh, there's all that. I don't think I'm going to make my mum something for her birthday this year. I don't... I think, oh, I think she's probably, I might make her something, I might make her some jewellery to go with her present, but she, uh, she's probably sick of homemade things really, isn't she? And, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get Rafe out before I go. Come here. He's having a lovely time, aren't you? Look, he's itching to get back here, because look what I gave him. <laughs> so he's happy. I actually, did, when I, um went in there and I was going to leave him and bring Holly I actually left some treats on one of these um, on the pink, big pink bed to lure him there and I put Holly in here and I'd got this already but no 
you wanted mum, didn't you? You know what a lovely time I had. You're not missing Holly now, are you? Hey? So what a little one. So I don't know what's going to happen in the future with who I'm going to bring in because I might have to do a bit of training. If I want to bring Holly in here, I might have to do a bit of training with him because <laughs> he's a monster. He's a mummy's boy, aren't you? That's what it is. Oh, mummy's boy. So um, thanks for watching. I hope, and actually, it's a little bit shorter than the last one. So I think I've done, no matter things I've shown you, I think I've done all right. So uh, thanks for watching. And um, and I'll, 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 I don't know what I'm going to bring you next time, but you just <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, and I've lost my remote again, so I've got to reach over for the button. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye.